Okay, in this video we want to look at the following example. So we want to find the general solution to this non-homogeneous linear differential equation, that's second order. So we have y double prime minus 5y prime plus 6y is 20 e to the minus 2x minus 15 cosine 3x minus 3 sine 3x. <clears throat> So the first thing we need to do is find the solution to the corresponding homogeneous differential equation. So let's do that. So we'll look at the corresponding homogeneous differential equation, which is given by y double prime minus 5y prime plus 6y equals 0. So we'll look at uh, the characteristic polynomial for this solution. So that's given by u squared minus 5u plus 6 equals 0, which we can factor into u minus 3, u minus 2 equals 0. So the roots are 2 and 3, which tells us that the solution to the homogeneous uh, differential equation is c1 e to the 3x plus c2 e to the 2x, where c1 and C2 are arbitrary constants. So let's hang out, let's hang on to the solution to this homogeneous differential equation um, because we'll need it at the end. Now we'll look at the particular solution. So given that uh, the forcing function is built by an exponential part and then a part that is built out of sines and cosines. That gives us a good starting place for the particular solution, which is the same type of exponential function with an undetermined coefficient plus an undetermined coefficient and then cosine 3x plus another undetermined coefficient and then sine 3x. So our guess for the solution type will be a e to the minus 2x plus b cosine 3x plus c sine 3x. Now we just have to determine a, b, and c. So what we'll do is plug this into the differential equation. So we'll want y p double prime minus 5 y p prime plus 6 times y p equals the right hand side of that equation. So we'll build this up from the bottom. So let's say we have 6yp at the end. So in this case, we know yp is of the form a e to the minus 2x plus b cosine 3x plus c sine 3x. Good. So that's our yp term. And now we need minus 5 times the derivative of y, yp. So let's take the derivative of this. So we'll get minus 2a e to the minus 2x using the chain rule. And then we'll get minus 3b sine of 3x, again using the chain rule. And finally, we'll get plus 3c cosine 3x. Good. So that's our minus 5yp term and now we need a yp double prime term. So yp double prime will be given by the derivative of this bit. So here we have 4a e to the minus 2x and now we'll have plus not, sorry, minus 9b cosine 3x and then we'll have minus 9c sine 3x. Okay, so let's reiterate what we have right here. All of this is yp double prime. All of this is yp prime. And all of this is yp. And so now we want this to be equal to the right hand side of this equation. So in other words, we want this to be equal to 20 e to the minus 2x minus 15 cosine 3x minus 3 sine 3x. So that's what we want that to be equal to. 
So uh, let's look at what we get. So now we can take this equation, which is given by uh, yp double prime minus 5 yp prime plus 6 yp equals this, and we can equate the like terms. So we have an exponential part, and so extracting the coefficient of e to the minus 2x on both sides of the equation, we should be able to find out what a is. So let's see, on the left-hand side of the equation, we have 4a from here, we have negative 5 times negative 2a, so that's plus 10a, good, and then we have plus 6a equals 20, great, and so notice that's the same thing as 20a equals 20, or that means a equals 1, so we have discovered that in our solution the coefficient of e to the minus 2x is 1. Good. Now let's move on to the cosines and the sines. So let's do cosine of x first. So we'll do cosine of x on the left hand side. So notice we have minus 9b. Good. And then here we have minus 5 times 3c. So that's minus 15c, good, and then we have 6 times b, so that's plus 6b, and this is going to be equal to negative 15. Great, so we can simplify this a little bit, so that'll give us minus 3b minus 15c equals minus 15. Okay, good. Now we can do the same thing with uh, sines. So sine of 3x, I should say this was cosine of 3x. So sine of 3x on each side of the equation. So on the left hand side we have minus 9c, so minus 9c. And then we have minus 5 times uh, minus 3b, so that's going to be plus 15b. Good. And then finally we have 6 times c, so that's plus 6c equals, then we have negative 3, minus 3. Good. So now notice that is going to give us the following, 15b minus 3c equals negative 3. Okay, good. So uh, now notice it's, uh, I, I won't go over the solution in detail, but you can use your favorite method for solving systems of linear equations. But now notice that um, what ends up being a solution here is C equals one and B equals zero. So here we have B equals zero and C equals one is a solution. So that means we have a form for our particular solution. We have A equals 1, we have B equals 0, and we finally have um, C equals 1. Good. So combining that with our homogeneous, we should be able to write down the general solution, and I'll clean up the board and then we'll do that. Okay, so previously we had looked at this non-homogeneous differential equation and we had determined that the solution to the corresponding homogeneous differential equation was given as follows. So we have c1 e to the 3x plus c2 e to the 2x. Good. And then we found that the particular part, and we used the method of undetermined coefficients, was e to the minus 2x plus sine of 3x. So that means that our general solution will be given as a sum of these. So we can write that down as y equals, so it'll be the homogeneous part plus the particular part. So here we have c1 e to the 3x plus c2 e to the 2x plus e to the minus 2x plus sine of 3x. And here we have c1 and c2 are arbitrary constants. So that gives us the general solution to this differential equation. 